Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the first of many SeedCare DigiCare webinars. My name is Paolo Peterson. I'm the global head of SeedCare product management, and I'm located out of Basel, Switzerland. Today, I will be your moderator and take you through the first seminar where we have two guest speakers that will help us present the material for us. A few rules around the webinar. First of all, your microphone is automatic muted, so we will control that from here. Second of all, uh, during the presentation, you're assuming we'll have questions that will come up. On your screen in the bottom right corner, there's a box where you can type in your questions. And the question associated with the topics today, we will try to address them after the webinar. If you have other questions related to our seed care portfolio, um, you can put them in there as well, and I will personally get back to you since I will be able to see your email address when you type in the questions. And then finally, the webinar will be recorded. So uh, you will all get a link to the webinar afterwards if there's a specific part of the webinar that you would like to hear a second time. Maybe we can move forward here. If we will move forward this slide. Here we go. As many parts of the world are now increasingly impacted by the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, we are taking further action in Syngenta Sea Care to implement business continuity while practicing social distancing. This is particularly important in Syngenta in our supply and uh, production side, but also in R&D, where people are much needed to do very critical work. As the global leader in seed treatment technology, it's important to us to be keep innovate, not just in seed treatment technologies, but also the way we reach to our customers. We have decided to initiate this webinar series, also known as DigiCare, to be sure that our customer have the latest information from us due to cancellation of many of the global conferences and meetings here in the first half of 2020. So today is the first of many in this series about our latest findings and our innovations. Today, I would like to welcome you, our two speakers, Paul Oakley's he is our seed care product lead for United States, and Monica Yos, who is a global seed care product manager based out of Basel, Switzerland. I will now hand it over to Monica, who will take us through the first part of the presentation. Thank you very much for the introduction, Paula. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome also from my side. I'm very excited and honored to introduce you today to Saltro, Saltro, a novel seed treatment solution for seedling disease control. Next slide, please. So Syngenta has been in the seed treatment industry for more than 40 years. 40 years of experience led to a leading seed care portfolio, and you can see our seed care portfolio here on the slide. We are active in all four segments, so we work on abiotic stress management technologies, we work in the nematode space, in the insecticide space, and also in the disease control space. With Saltro, we are adding a new active ingredient, a new very strong brand to our disease control segment. If we are talking about seed treatment fungicides, we are talking about a wide range of different targets across multiple crops. You see some of the key targets here on the slides. There are many more. Some of the pathogens we are targeting are leading to very specific obvious symptoms like the downy mildews or the bumps. Other pathogens, especially in the early phase, have symptoms which are hidden. This is, for example, this year. I have highlighted three different targets here. So Bacchanae in rice, FOMA in canola, and sudden death syndrome in soybean. And these are the three key targets we are targeting with 
cultural. If we are talking about Saltro, we are actually talking about adepidine. So adepidine is the active ingredient behind Saltro. And adepidine is a molecule which was not just found by coincidence, but this is really innovation by design. Why am I saying that? Well, adepidine belongs to the class of the carboxamides, and the carboxamides have been used for plant protection for a very long time. So the first one was actually carboxin, which was already launched 1960. So with adepidine, we are bringing another carboxamide to the market, but it's not just another carboxamide, because a lot of the old carboxamides, they're very narrow in their spectrum, or they have an unfavorable tox profile, or they are not very potent. So you use, or you have to use high application rate. So with adepidine, we innovated a new molecule which combines the individual strengths of the previous carboxamide, and it does that even with a favorable human and environmental safety profile. So if you look at the molecule here on the slide, it consists of three different parts, and it's linked in the middle through this unique ethyl linker. Um, we have the power part, the power part which delivers your unique potency and the intrinsic activity. So this also ensures that you don't need to use a lot of active ingredient in the field. You have the stamina part. The stamina part ensures that your compound works fast. It withstands several environmental conditions and it also remains effective longer. And it also ensures that your active ingredient stays exactly where it's needed and this is around the root zone. And the last part, that's the spectrum part. We added this part just to broaden the spectrum and to ensure that we're having key pathogens included in our targets. So once again, adepidine is not just another carboxamide, but this is really innovation by design in order to handle difficult to control diseases. Next slide, please. So if we look at the story of Saltro, this is actually a story which began in 2008. Why 2008? Well, that's when we had the compound the first time in our hands. So that's when the first synthesis of the molecule happened. However, obviously there was a lot of work done already before that. So we had to design the molecule to make it unique. But in 2008, we had it the first time in our hands. We then went into the field, into the greenhouse, tested it on different targets, and were very excited by, by the results we saw and the activity. We then decided to go full speed ahead, develop this active ingredient. We initiated formulation work, initiated all the regulatory work, also the field work which is needed, set up our manufacturing, the supply chain, and 2015 then we submitted the very first dossier. One year later, we did receive the first registration and launched the compound for the first time. This was as a foliar application, and the brand name there is Meravis. It then took an additional three years until we got the first registration of Saltro. So end of last year, we did receive registration of Saltro in the US and also in Australia, and we did already launch that brand. Currently, we are focusing on three key targets. This is FOMA in canola, Bacchanae in rice, and Sun Death Syndrome in soybeans. You might ask yourself, why these three key targets? Well, simply because we feel the solutions which are currently on the market for these key diseases are not sufficient, they're not satisfying, and with Saltro, we are actually able to bring a new game-changing technology for these diseases to the market. So if we are looking into these key diseases and these key, key targets, let's start with canola. And here we are talking about Foma linga com lingam control in canola. Um, this pathogen is also known under the disease names black leg and stem canker. And the pathogen can infect your crop at a very early stage already. So it leads to 
symptoms on your cotyledons and are also on your early, early leaves. And in the worst case, it can lead to seedling death. And you see that on the left side. And when you use Saltro, you can ensure that this is not happening. However, this pathogen is actually around the crop and impacts the crop during the whole growing cycle. So throughout um, the whole time, and it also has airborne phase. And if you go out in the field and cut the stems of your crop just before harvest, you will observe some black stems. And this is the stem canker caused by FOMA. And you see that here on the right side. And we are very excited to share with you that Saltra significantly reduces this infection at this late stage. And I want to mention here this picture that that's real. Um, I've been in Canada last year. I've cut dozens of stems and that's exactly what you see out there. So that's really the performance of Saltro. I also want to highlight um, why this is so important. Well, there are quite a lot of seed treatments on the market already which claim FOMA link gum control. And I'm not saying they're not working, but they only work on the early infection, so on the cut to the infection. If we're talking about registration, well, we do have the product registered and launched in Australia already. They're under the brand name Saltro Duo. And we do also hold registration in US and in Canada, we are actually expecting registration any day. So to summarize, again, Saltro is an excellent um, tool to control FOMA infection throughout the whole growing cycle. It is also an excellent mixing partner to other seed treatment fungicides or seed treatments in general, um, also to ensure you have the full package of crop, crop protection or seedling protection at the early phase. I did highlight here Maxim XL, which is one of other, our other products. We are combining Saltro with Maxim XL in Australia. Also, the last point, we did see significant better protection against blackleg compared to other current market standards. Um, one point to highlight here is that other standards, standards, they do face resistance issues. So it is important to bring out a new mode of action. And this is exactly what we are doing with SALT. If we are talking Saltro in rice, we talk about the key target Bacchanae. So Bacchanae is um, caused by a fusarium. And the symptoms are elongated tillers, chlorotic tillers, and even stem rot. And in the worst case, you will completely lose your seedling or at least um, some tillers. This disease is considered as a, being a major seedling disease in most of the rice growing areas. And we are really happy to bring with Saltro a new tool to manage this disease. And if you look here at the lower part of the slide, you do see the efficacy of Saltro. So you clearly see that your crop is much greener, so less chlorotic leaves and also your tillers are less elongated. Here also, if we talk about registrations, um, we have Adepidine registered and launched in South Korea. There it's not under the brand name of Saltro, but under the brand name of Miravis Duo. So also there, our product is combined with another fungicide. Registration in China is expected in 2022. To summarize Saltro on rice, well, we are bringing a new highly potent tool with a new mode of action to the market to fight Bacchanal. Also here it is an ideal mixing partner to other seed treatments. So it's, it's completely compatible with our other offers. And also it's an ideal mixing partner to manage resistance challenges, which are already out there in the, in the market. So there are compounds which claim to have activity on Bacchanal, but most of them already do face resistance issues. Overall, we did observe a very good control of, of Saltro and even better than the current market standards. And again, this comes back to the fact that a lot of standards are unfortunately facing resistance challenges out there in the field.
So with that, we are coming to Saltro in soybean, and I hand over to Paul, who will share with you the success story in soybeans. Thank you, Monica. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Oaklish. Uh, I'm the U.S. soybean seed care product lead for Syngenta. So in addition to uh, all of our uh, fungicide and fungicide insecticide products, I've also had the opportunity over the last year or so to, uh, to launch Saltro. So uh, as part of this, I was, I was asked to uh, present you know, so, sort of our experience uh, with Saltro in the field and also kind of uh, walk through what sudden death syndrome is since it's uh, somewhat unique to, to the US market, uh, pockets of it elsewhere in the world. But um, if you'd go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about the disease and then what Saltro brings. Uh, before we get into that, though, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, the various stresses that, you know, soybeans are under um, and, and how that plays into the, the equation for Saltro. You know, in, in the U.S., there's a, a, a great desire from a grower perspective to uh, plant soybeans earlier and earlier. Uh, the longer you can have them, have them in the field, the, the longer they've got to, to soak up that sunlight and, and put yield on. Uh, so we see a, a tremendous amount of pressure to get out earlier and earlier each year. Of course, that comes with some some costs, uh, and, and oftentimes those costs are are in the form of stress on the soybean seedling. Um, whether that's coming from the environment that you're planting into, uh, with cool, wet soils, uh, and the diseases that profligate within those uh, types of environment, to you know maybe it's not so uh, so wet, maybe it's dry uh, early, and and the, the different stresses that that planting early can actually have on soybeans start to stack up. You know that. Uh, manifests itself in terms of diseases, like I said, with some of those early seedling uh, rot diseases or even sudden death syndrome, or um, it, one of the challenges that our growers face uh, across the Midwest is, is actually with uh, herbicide-resistant weeds. Uh, and so the, the chemical program in order to control those uh, resistant weeds has become more and more tough, uh, more and more pre-emergent herbicides being used, which itself can, can be a stress on the beans. When we think about sudden death syndrome, uh, the, the one product that's been on the marketplace for some time that we'll talk about today, um, Alevo, has itself been a stress on the beans. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that here on a, on a subsequent slide. So when you think about all of these different stresses and how they stack up, uh, eventually something's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back and starts to lead to things like stand count reduction, uh, stunting, you know, uneven emergence, which puts more pressure on your herbicide program increased disease pressure just due to having weakened plants, uh, ultimately yield drag. But, but what it means for a seed company is that all of that effort that's been put into place with proving your varieties, selling your varieties, growing them, and, and delivering them to an end customer, they're not going to show to the best of their abilities. So when, when we think about Saltro and one of the ways that we've, we've positioned it is if we can take one of those causes of stress out of the equation in terms of, uh, you know, the, the, the injury that, that is being caused by the current STS uh, solution, it's only going to make your, your soybeans look better. So anything we can do to help mitigate and manage these stresses, whether that's through early seedling disease control, early season, or early season insect control, or uh, not injuring the crop with an SDS solution is, is only going to make our seed company customers' uh, product look better in the eyes of the grower. So if you go to the next slide, we'll get into that a little bit deeper. So SDS, sudden death syndrome, is caused by a fusarium disease. So it's a soil disease um, that, that manifests itself much later in the season, uh, very similar to what Monica was describing with, uh, with the black leg and canola. This is a, a disease that attacks the soybean plant early in its life cycle, uh, almost directly after seeding. Uh, it's made worse by the presence of uh, plant parasitic nematodes like soybean cyst nematode, which is very prolific uh, across the U.S. Midwest. Um, and so what, what ends up happening is you've got the, the soil uh, pathogen, you've got the nematodes, the nematodes start to feed on the, the soybean roots and open up uh, lesions for the disease to get into. Uh, the root system profligates within the root system, it, it uh, infects the plant, and then sometime later in the season, uh, depending on the, the environment, you start to see a flush of toxins up into the, uh, the canopy of the plant. And you start to see some of these very common symptoms uh, that are shown on the screen here with a very, um, very well-known sort of inner, inner leaf chlorosis, uh, yellowing, and ultimately uh, defoliation of the plant. 
the, the worst part about this is, you know, the infection takes place basically at seed at, at seeding, uh, and then under the right conditions, uh, which are basically the, the perfect growing conditions for soybeans, lots of spring and summer moisture, uh, moderate temperatures, you know, you're, you're really setting yourself up for a great yield environment. That's the exact type of environment that, that SDS does the best in um, from a disease perspective. So, you know, growers have already put all their input costs in. Um, they're, they're really uh, pumping money into the crop because it looks like they're going to have a, a bumper crop. And then right around the end of August and early September, the entire thing just dies right in front of them. Um, so it's a it's a very emotional disease for uh, for growers because there's nothing once you start to see the symptoms of this this flush of toxins into the canopy, there's nothing you can do about it. So <clears throat> what we've seen in the marketplace is that this is a pest that while it doesn't happen every year, um, while it's not in every field, growers who have experienced it are more than willing to to invest in protecting themselves from this disease just because it's such an emotional uh, roller coaster to to have a crop that should be yielding you know 80 bushels and then all of a sudden it's giving you 40. Um, it's a it's a devastating blow to to a farmer. So this is why having a solution that uh, that helps prevent the soil disease and actually has activity on the nematodes is is critically important. If you go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So one of the products that's been on the marketplace for some time uh, is a competitive product. It's owned by BSF. It's called Alevo. Uh, it's another SDHI uh, fungicide. <clears throat> and, and, you know, it was launched in 2015 and has done a, a remarkable job for uh, the American soybean farmer in the fact that it's basically been the only option uh, against sudden death syndrome that's, that's actually worked. Um, like I said, started in 2015. It's been the only product on the marketplace until this year um, that has actually had any sort of efficacy against the disease and against nematodes to uh, try to try to attack the entire complex. The the issue with Alevo, uh, as you can see on the left side of this screen, is it's a very water soluble uh, molecule. So as the as the seed starts to take in moisture, uh, a lot of that active ingredient uh, moves into the plant. You know, of course, in the early early stages of a soybean development, there's not very many places for it to go, uh, and it sort of settles in the cotyledons, uh, and it's difficult for the plant to metabolize. So the the, the active ingredient, the fluopyram, uh, the olivo, sits in those cotyledons and actually starts to damage and burn um, those cotyledons. And you can see that on the left hand side of the screen. And that happens so commonly that that actually when the product was launched, they they branded it the halo effect, and it was just sort of you know the the way of knowing that your beans were treated with Olivo is that hey, you're going to see uh, a little bit of a little bit of burning on the cotyledons, and hey, isn't that a great thing because it means you've got SDS protection? Well, actually, it's not a great thing because what what that means is those those cotyledons are an energy store for the the young soybean, and and really all of that all of those carbohydrates are supposed to be going into developing the plant above ground and below ground, and so what we see very commonly uh, with Olivo is you know, a, a stunting, a delay in emergence, and ultimately a, a reduced biomass uh, on the on the young seedlings. Which, if you if you think about, you know, these these plants that you see on the screen were grown in completely clean soil, uh, no pre-emergent herbicides, no no nothing in the soil, uh, and you can already see the difference between what the Olivo treatment and the Saltro treatment are bringing in terms of that early season plant health. Um, you know, you stack a pre-emergent herbicide on top of that, you put even colder, even wetter environments than what we put into the greenhouse, and, and these differences really start to separate. So what we see with Saltro um, is, is a, none of that sort of uh, early season stress that, that you get with Olivo. Uh, you don't have to give up that early season emergence and, um, and uh, vigor in order to get the SDS protection later. And actually, the, the picture that we've got on the far right of this screen uh, is actually Saltro at two times our label rate, and you still don't see any of that phytotoxic effect or the, the halo effect uh, with Saltro. So, you know, going back to our earlier conversation about all of the various stresses that uh, that a soybean plant can be under and or your genetics can be under, uh, removing this one, we feel, is a very, uh, very valuable piece for a seed company or, or a grower uh, because it means that many less replants. It means that many, you know, more plants that are going to come up to, to target a population. 
uh, it, it means less concern around, you know, did I do something that's actually going to set me back if I don't have the, the SDS show up? So this is a, a huge piece of, of why we see Saltra being valuable. Uh, again, sort of innovation by design and, and thinking about, you know, what are the, the weaknesses of, of some of the products that are on the marketplace and how are we going to do it better? And, and Saltro uh, certainly does. If you go to the next slide, please, Pella. So it's easy to do that in a greenhouse. Uh, this is what we see in the field. Um, so these plants were uh, grown out at a university site um, in Southern Illinois University outside of Valmeyer, Illinois. Uh, it's one of the hotbeds of, of SDS. It's one of the best places to uh, develop products or, or genetics for, for SDS. And these plants were dug up at random uh, from one of our trial blocks. So you can see um, just the, the overall dramatic difference in, in biomass above ground. Uh, if you look at the left-hand side with the Levo, not a single one of those plants still has the cotyledons attached to it even. Uh, but also, and, and probably more importantly, uh, a very different uh, amount of root mass on these plants as well. Because if you think about, you know, many times our growers would say, ah, you know, soybeans compensate and they, they can bounce back from a lot of things. And, and to a certain extent, that's, that's absolutely true above ground. Uh, below ground, however, you know, there's sort of a, a, a timeline that your, your soybean plant is going to be putting on roots. And once that plant goes from, re, from vegetative to reproductive, <clears throat> it really decreases the amount of energy that goes into root development or root repair. So as you're thinking about, you know, those early season stresses with cold, uh, cold or wet soils and, and the impact that that can have on overall root development, you know, it's really important that you, or even nematodes uh, in the soil, attacking the roots and, and damaging them. It's, it's all the more important that you get a strong and robust root system early in the season because, you know, within, you know, a few weeks, it's actually going to not put as much energy into the root mass and that's gonna be what you have to carry out through the, the end of the year. And so these were about 30 days after planting uh, in extremely high SDS uh, environments and with you know, extremely high uh, soybean cyst nematode pressure in this field as well. And you can see the difference that Saltro is bringing uh, in terms of protection, in terms of uh, crop health, um, as compared to what has been the, the only product on the marketplace and, and a product that growers have been pretty happy with uh, in Olivo. So as we've kind of put these side-by-sides out in the field and, and have shown even this, right? This, this isn't even getting at the bread and butter of, of why uh, a person would buy an SDS treatment, right? This is all just the early season uh, crop safety piece of the story. Um, this alone has, has been quite compelling to, uh, to our, our retail customers and to growers alike, just having something that doesn't immediately set you, off, set you back um, in terms of a solution. If you go to the next slide, we'll look at what the difference actually is in terms of SDS protection. So same field um, as the plants that we just looked at on the previous slide. This is uh, fast forwarding maybe three, four months. Um, on August 30th here, that last picture was taken in May. Um, but you can start to see on the left-hand side of the screen uh, on the Olivo, um, very typical symptomology of SDS infection. This is that those toxins uh, flushing into the canopy and starting to kill the kill the leaves. And it starts with this sort of yellowing and and ultimately necrosis. But if you if you came back to the same field a week, two weeks later, uh, the left-hand side of the screen would be completely defoliated, and those plants would have basically shut off. Um, so the earlier that those toxins flush up into the canopy, it could be you know, aborting flowers, it could be dropping pods, or in, in this case, likely it's probably just affecting the test weight uh, of the pods because you're not really pumping all of that energy into to pod development. Uh, but if it had come in earlier, the impact on yield obviously would be even worse because you wouldn't have, have the pods set. But the, the important thing here is this is the, the level of protection that, that growers have become accustomed to with Olivo. Uh, and this is significantly better than what you know, a, an untreated check would look like. The difference is if you look at the right-hand side of the screen with Saltro, these are the label rates for, for SDS of the two treatments. We put them on the exact same uh, fungicide insecticide base. And you can see the dramatic difference in terms of SDS protection that you're getting from Saltro uh, in this trial. And, and you know, that's not to say that you know, a couple of weeks down the road, you wouldn't come and start to see some SDS symptomology on the Saltro side. It's not a cure. 
Uh, but what you're doing with that early season treatment on the seed is buying your canopy more time uh, later into the season and, and closer to harvest. So all of this green area on the right is obviously going to pump more energy into those pods, uh, putting on more pods, filling out pods more, and, and ultimately bringing you higher yield. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, we'll look at the data. On average, uh, across five years of testing, what we've seen um, across many university trials, uh, lots of third-party research with this as we've led up to the, uh, to the commercialization of the product is, a, on average, a four bushel an acre improvement over Elevo. So we're not comparing to a check because what, what we've seen in the marketplace is that if growers have a problem with SDS, they're not using nothing. They are using Elevo because it's the only option that's really worked. So we've, we've always measured ourselves to the market standard uh, in this space. And what we see is on average, we beat that market standard by four bushels, which if I convert that for a uh, European or, or non-US audience is uh, 270 kilograms per hectare improvement in yield uh, when you have SDS in the field over the current market standard of Olivo. Some of that's because of that crop safety aspect. Uh, a lot of that, however, is due to the fact that we are bringing something that is significantly uh, more efficacious against the fusarium disease that causes SDS uh, than, than what growers have had access to. We've never tested anything in the US um, that's better on SDS than, uh, than Saltro. And, and that's from our portfolio, that's from competitive portfolios. There is nothing that's more effect, effective on, on SDS than, than Saltro. And that really goes back to that power part of, of what Monica talked about. Um, so you know, four bushels an acre, uh, 270 kilograms per hectare improvement over the market standard is, uh, is pretty exciting. But if we look at uh, the next slide, this is uh, one trial in particular. Um, so not, you know, not to be expected on every acre, but I, I think this one really shows a separation uh, between the two products. So what we're looking at here on the screen is in the brown boxes, uh, it's six reps of a university trial. This came out of the University of Minnesota. Um, in the brown boxes are the Alevo uh, at the SDS rate uh, treatments, and in the sort of green boxes are the uh, Saltro blocks within this trial. Six reps. I'll let you kind of look across. Um, these are bushels per acre yield differences between the two products. I don't have all of them converted to kilograms per hectare, but I've got the important ones. But I, I think you can see just the dramatic difference, both visually and in the numbers. Uh, between what Saltro is bringing from a protection standpoint and, and Olivo. I'll, I'll spoil it a little bit. Anywhere in the reps where you still see green foliage uh, had Saltro under, uh, had Saltro treatment on it uh, with some combination of, of other uh, factors across all of the reps. But you know, anywhere where you don't see, salt, uh, don't see anything green, where you just see either bare ground or, or dying plants, didn't have Saltro under it in this test. So this was an extreme example, um, you know, probably it, it was inoculated, probably had perfect growing conditions for, for SDS, but it was really a pressure test, right? And, and when put to the ultimate test, um, you can see the difference in terms of what Saltro and Olivo brought uh, in, in, in SDS protection. And that's not to say that Olivo didn't do well, uh, versus the check, it still it still yielded 365 kilograms per hectare more than the check, which is well within sort of the range that they uh, they claim in their in their marketing materials, and and would fall within the range of, of their uh, their data set. You know, 365 bushels or kilograms per hectare. That's that's admirable. It was it was statistically different than the check. The the difference is that Saltro in this trial uh, yielded. 1,500 kilograms per hectare more than the check. So that's the 22 uh, bushels per acre difference, 1,500 kilograms per hectare more. And on average, we beat uh, Olivo in this trial by 1,140 kilograms per hectare on average. So I mean, this is, when put to the ultimate test, when, when really stressed uh, as, as much as possible, Saltro came out on top in a, in a very, very big way in this trial. And while you, this won't happen on every acre, um, while we can't say, you know, hey, on average, you're going to see 17 bushels an acre difference, I think this is, this is the kind of pressure test that, that really speaks to the power, the spectrum, and the stamina that, that Monica spoke to around the molecule here. So we're very excited about Saltro uh, in the U.S., obviously. 
being able to come into a marketplace of, of basically one competitor uh, and beat them uh, across the board, uh, bringing a better solution to our retail customers, to our seed company customers, and to growers ultimately um, at the same time is, is really remarkable. It doesn't happen very often, and, and we're very excited about the opportunity that we've got here with Saltra. So I'll, I'll hand it back to Pella um, to, to kind of close us off here and, and open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Paul, and thank you, Monica. So to wrap it up here, uh, we are really excited in Syngenta to be launching Saltro. Uh, we launched it here in 2019 in US, as you heard, uh, in Australia as well. Um, Saltro for canola would be a new standard for fighting FOMA or blackleg throughout the whole growing cycle without any compromise. Um, Saltro for rice would be a very reliable tool for control in bacchanae. Uh, which there hasn't been a lot of solutions in the market for bacchanae. And the ones that have been in the market have only survived for a few years due to resistance. So this will really be a step change for the rice growers in, in Asia particular, particularly. And then soybean, you just heard from Paul, this is, this is like a step change in technology for sudden death syndrome in soybeans. So it will not cause any stress, no phytotoxicity, and it really will be a... Um, a needed technology for the growers that try to maximize yield uh, in the fields. So to wrap this up, as we in Syngenta collaborate in new ways, I know as a society, both we as Syngenta, but also you as a customer and agribusiness partner, we will continue to be creative and come with passion solution that will help overcome these challenges we're dealing with today. So I wanna thank you all for listening to us today. Um, be safe, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and thank you again for your business. So I will continue now. Uh, we will go in and look at the, the questions. We got uh, time for a few questions and a few questions came in already. So um, I will start. Um, the first one, is related to uh, to you, Paul, uh, to US. So right now it looks like we have a normal spring in the Midwest. Um, it was a very wet fall and a lot of moisture in the ground. So uh, many growers know that need to plant earlier to maximize yield. And when they do that, they will have to address a sudden death syndrome. So do we as Syngenta, do we have some kind of prediction tools uh, that farmers can use? Or what is your recommendation to the farmers now start planting here? over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, you, you're absolutely right, Pella. Um, you know, we faced historic flooding uh, in the U.S. last year that, that dramatically affected uh, growers' ability to get into the field and, and plant um, to, to the tune of, you know, about 7 million acres actually didn't get planted uh, at all last year due to the flooding. So, you know, it's, it's our firm belief that, you know, growers really remember three years, their best year, their worst year, and last year. And, and what what uh, what we think that that's going to do is is lead to a uh, a decision point for growers that as soon as that ground is dry enough to get over and start planting, they're going to do it. Uh, in, in some cases, we've already seen planters rolling uh, throughout the south and, and even creeping into some of the I states, some of the some of the soybean belt, um, which is remarkably early already. Um, and, and I think where, where I would go with that isn't, isn't necessarily a forecasting or predictive model, but just thinking about it agronomically, um, you know, SDS is, is in a field, right? It's a soil disease. Once you have it, it's really not going anywhere. Uh, it's not going to go away on its own unless you just lay fallow or, or, or plant corn for 30 years. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's something that you're going to have to deal with if you've got a history of it. Um, it is obviously environmentally, um, driven. So the more of those cool, wet soils that you're planting into, which there's a lot of throughout the Midwest right now, um, the more propensity there's going to be for the, the fusarium disease to, to show itself and, and start to affect the plants. Um, of course, wet soils also help nematodes move around a little bit. So it's, uh, it's you know, that complex is really going to be working against you. What I would say is, you know, if you've got a history, if you're going out early into cool, wet soils, you better be protected from a lot of things, um, from early seedling diseases, from damping off, uh, or, you know, insects, um, and, and SDS. So it's really, you know, you can't get it all for free, right? You're going to have to protect yourself in that environment. Um, 
And, and that's where our, our local folks are out there really trying to get that message home to, to the growers. Yeah, and then I'll, that was another thing you were, you were talking a little bit about, Paul. There was many growers that when they used the uh, Elevo uh, pre-merge herbicide, they had to put a window in for like a couple of weeks before they could plant. Now you have a technology here, you can plant and spray the same day without worry about these uh, interactions. So that's also going to be helpful if we're going to have another wet spring. So uh, excellent, excellent point. We got another question here. I think this is more related to Monica. Um, canola, we just launched it in Australia. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the world's largest canola producing country, Canada? What is the plan uh, around the launch? Can you give us a little bit of information on that? Absolutely. Thank you for the question. So again, I told you I've been in Canada last year and that was actually a pre-launch event we had there. So we did share our newest technology there already with a wide range of, of experts in that field, also seed companies and growers. So we are heavily preparing this launch. I had it on the slide before. Um, we do expect registration any day. Of course, I can't promise you anything, but if it goes fine, we should be soon able to share with you this great news. So as soon as we, we get the registration, we will certainly go out there and fully launch the product. Also, just to mention here, we obviously already have a portfolio on canola in, in Canada, and we want to just go out there with Salter by itself, because again, it's important that you manage the whole complex of, of soil diseases or seed diseases even you have out there. So we will offer Saltro in a combination with our existing portfolio and make sure you have the best start for your crop you can get. So yeah, be, be um, sure we, we share with you the news as soon as, as they're available. Good, thank you. I got a couple of more questions for you so you can, you can stay on Monica. The sure. next one is related to resistance. So adipidin is also sold as a foliar, um, foliar product. How, how should you as a grower um, deal with this uh, to minimize the probability of resistance? Well, obviously we are looking into that heavily. Um, also, we are obviously following the guidelines from FROC, so from the Fungicide Resistance Action Committee. So we're completely in line with what we're doing with these guidelines. Now, the good thing about the Depidine is that um, on the foliar part, it's being used on completely different targets. So we are not too worried about that. If you look into soybeans, we are targeting sudden death syndrome uh, with a seed treatment, but we are looking at leaf spots, for example, with foliar application. So we don't see an issue there with multiple applications throughout the seasons. However, um, also here, of course, we do whatever we can to minimize the, the resistance risk build up because we don't want to put sultural on risk, um, unnecessarily on risk. So wherever possible, we also work with premixes like in Bacchanaya, for example, there's still mixing partner out there with chaff activity on Bacchanaya. So whenever possible, we do mix them. And also on the foliar side, obviously, um, when possible, we don't go with straight products there, just to minimize any resistance risk, which might be out there. But once again, we are targeting completely different targets on the seed treatment side, than on the foliar side. Excellent, thank you. I'll, I'll give you a break here. That's a not one more question, but let's give one to Paul here. Paul, it's related to compatibility. So you as a product lead in US, uh, how comfortable are you around compatibility with other uh, products uh, in the market? And also there's a question around inoculum, rhizobia inoculum. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so Saltro, as a standalone product in the U.S., um, you know, we, we basically built it um, with the assumption that it's going to be you know, used on lots of different chassis uh, fungicide insecticide products. So compatibility uh, and formulation, you know, stability, mixability, things like that were, were key in the, the formulation design as well. So it's not just about the design of the active ingredient, but it's also the design, chemical design of the active actual final formulation that we put into the marketplace. And it, and it works remarkably well. Um, Olivo, you know, that's another one of the downsides, I guess, to, to Olivo is that it's a very thick product. Um, it's got this sort of weird um, sheer thickening effect when it gets hot. Um, whereas Saltro, you know, you can 
get it really hot, get it really cold, and it and it still uh, performs really really well. So it's got a lower use rate uh, than than Alevo, and it's got more um, stability and and works better uh, in in slurries and things like that. So that, that's another benefit um, that affects more of the the downstream treater or the the seed company treater um, than the grower. So I didn't I didn't touch on it very much, but it is a very compatible product and and works really really well. Plays nicely with others. Um, from a rhizobium perspective, we've done lots of testing. Don't see any sort of uh, rhizobium safety concerns um, from from Saltra at all. So it's uh, it's safe across the board and and nice to work with at the treater. Thanks, Paul. And just for the person who raised the question, um, uh, Syngenta has the CK Institute network globally that we have placed in all major regions and. Uh, the application work and the recipe work with Saltro have been tested inside and out by these specialists there. So uh, we're very comfortable around the, uh, the, uh, the application, the compatibility work. Monica, you're lucky. You're gonna, we're going to run out of questions here. Because, uh, not out of question, out of time. Um, but um, we're going to have to stop here. I will personally follow up to the questions that have been submitted and uh, with the answer to the questions afterwards. But I want to thank everybody for joining today. I really hope that you found uh, this webinar useful. Um, I'm very pleased to tell you that the second webinar in this series will happen already next week on uh, April the 8th, where we will talk about fall armyworm and insect uh, management, uh, with, a, with particularly looking into what we can do to manage this very devastating pest, fall armyworm, that is originated in the Americas and have now moved across uh, the entire uh, globe and recently just was uh, confirmed in, in Australia. So thank you again. Be safe out there. Uh, be safe uh, with your family. Take care of your family. And, um, and we look forward to see you again. We will send you uh, the link for the webinar next week, uh, just uh, later today. So thank you so much. <laughs>